I would put the invention of the alphabet among, if you wish, the absolute cardinal inventions of all of, all of human history. The first forms of writing, uh, hieroglyphics and cuneiform, were extremely difficult to learn and they were limited to a very small um, percentage, less than 2% of the population of Egypt and Mesopotamia could read and write. The old writing systems were all exceedingly complex, uh, could be used only by a scribal elite, and these usually under the dominance of the king or of the temple. There's an old saying that in the Valley of the Blind, the one-eyed man is king. If you know how to read and write, nobody else does. Within a very short period of time, you gain all the power. And then about 3,500 years ago, a group of people halfway between Mesopotamia and Egypt figured out a much simpler way to read and write called the alphabet. And the alphabet transformed the world. The alphabet continues to transform the world. There are several different writing systems that have been invented in the course of human history. There's actually only one alphabet. It has many visual forms that are currently in use, but we can trace most of those forms back to a common root, which is the Proto-Canaanite alphabet that emerged sometime around 1800 BC in the Sinai Peninsula. You mentioned the name Sinai to anybody historically. There's only one event that's associated with the Sinai, and that is the giving of the Ten Commandments. And I think it's amazing that the oldest alphabet ever discovered was in the Sinai. So the question is, was the enormous event that really happened there the invention of the alphabet? The Israelites are born as a people um, in relation to the written word. That is to say, they, they, are, they become a people when Moses, you know, during the Exodus, and Moses goes up a mountain, you know, with two blank stones, and he comes down with writing. And the guy's a scribe, obviously. Moses introduced the Ten Commandments, which was codified law. He came with a written code, written with alphabetic writing, and he introduced a new form of monotheism. The alphabet is there at the beginning of the monotheistic tradition. Really, the core of Jewish learning, teaching, and faith is to be able to read the scriptures. And what better way to, to inspire people to want to learn how to read and write this new form of language than to say that this is given to you in the moving, written by the moving finger of God. The history of the Jewish people, and hence of Christianity as well, is integrally entwined with um, the story of the alphabet, of this writing system that, unlike any others that came before it or any others that developed elsewhere, this phonetic writing system, this first writing system that privileged the human voice. You can draw sounds. Draw sounds. Yes, I can draw sounds. And I can speak them back. Show me. There is only one God. I mean, what, what amazes me, I was doing some work on early writing systems recently for another project, and the Phoenician letter forms and the early sort of, you know, earliest proto-alphabetic forms were constantly before my eyes. And then I was out in the landscape and I would see billboards and signs on the sides of trucks. And I would think, that's amazing. Those are actually Phoenician letter forms and they aren't that different. And that's, you know, 
4,000 years, modestly speaking, of those forms being in existence. And suddenly though, I had this incredible, uncanny feeling of this ancient culture. It's as though it's the sort of, you know, mind code of an ancient culture still with us. Very few things that we use in daily life that have that living legacy, you know, still active with them. The wheel, fire, you know, uh, forks, knives, a couple other things, but really, it's amazing.